The show starts off with the main lead, Mish, short for Michelle, dreaming about her perfect life, where she's the most popular girl in school and the apple of everyone's eyes. Even after waking up, she acts kind of delusional. She talks to people as if they know her, even when they're not paying attention or don't even know she exists. But the truth is, she's far from being well-known or popular. Not only are her high school friends uninterested in her, but they also refuse to recognize her. She's also a victim of a bully at school. Even her first cousin Brenda, the belle of the school, ignores and fat shames her. Mish, however, doesn't care since she's determined to become popular in her own way, and for that, she tries to change herself. She has two best friends, her only friends, Tanya and Yadi, who are way smarter than the bullies at school. One day at school, Mish talks about how she longs to sit by the fountain where only the popular students may sit. If anyone other than the popular students is there, they will be thrown in the water as punishment. Sitting by the fountain is certainly daunting for unpopular students like Mish and her friends, but she yearns to be there someday. During class, Mish helps the school Casanova, Danny, with his presentation project. It is revealed that she has a secret romance with this popular guy, and the couple often makes out in the toilets. Later when they're together, Mish tells him that she wants them to go public about their relationship, just like they promised. Since tomorrow is their one-year anniversary, it will be the perfect date. After much persuasion by Mish, Dan hesitantly accepts doing so. Once she gets back from school, she gets into a brief discussion with her mother, who has bought some nice heels for her. Mish likes her old sandals, so she doesn't want to get rid of them. Meanwhile, her stepfather, Fur, who loves Mish more than her biological father does, is busy preparing scrumptious meals for the family. The following day, Mish wakes up excitedly, as it is the day that she has been dreaming for a long time now. She gets ready in a lovely dress and enthusiastically approaches her secret boyfriend, Danny, who is relaxing with his popular friends at school. Unfortunately, although Danny is in love with her, he refuses to acknowledge her existence in front of everyone, claiming that he doesn't know her. Since he's friends with the so-called cool kids, he does not want them to find out that he's secretly dating the school clown. Because of this, Mish is understandably heartbroken. Worse, the bullies mock her for being another fan of Danny. Her two friends, Tanya and Yadi, comfort her, saying that being invisible at school is far better than wanting to be famous and popular like Brenda, Danny, and the rest of their friends. After school, Brenda also lectures her to stay in her own line. She believes it would do good for outcasts like Mish, as it would save her from the bullies. Consequently, our poor girl wallows in misery until she meets another attractive guy named Maddie in the neighborhood paper shop. They flirt with each other for a while, until Mish remembers the reason she was there. She then asks him to print some copies of a placard. She tells him that she's starting a revolution at the school tomorrow. The next day, she first confronts Danny in the restroom for completely ignoring her and breaking her heart the other day. She is not willing to forgive him whatsoever. She tells him that the whole world will one day see her the way she sees herself, fabulous and sassy. Unbeknownst to them, Brenda is listening to their conversation on the other side of the room. Following this, Mish sneaks into the speaker room and announces to the whole school that she is starting a revolution to make the fountain commonplace for everyone. She gives a thoughtful speech on diversity and self-love before taking the bold decision to sit by the fountain alone. Unfortunately, Mish soon meets her fate as the popular kids throw her in the water as punishment. Danny feels sorry for her, but he lacks the courage to stand up for her. Now completely drenched, Mish pulls herself together and continues to retaliate against the bullies. Brenda, who enjoys mocking her cousin, says that she'll never be popular like her. However, Mish, standing more confidently than ever, claims that she'll be better than her. Surprisingly, her statement earns her a big round of applause from the bystanders. During the weekend, Maddie, who also works as a part-time DJ and party planner, invites Mish to a school party. She's more than excited because she's never been to a party before. The following day at school, Danny anonymously places a teddy bear and flowers as an apology sign in Mish's seat. 
However, she is still mad at him, so she burns the gifts right in front of him during the science lab. Danny later retrieves the burnt teddy bear from the trash. Just then, Brenda asks him to talk in private. She tells him not to go out with Mish anymore. Danny initially pretends not to recognize her. However, he drops his act when Brenda reveals that she had overheard them talking the other day. She then reminds him that it would be a social suicide to date such an invisible girl like Mish. Meanwhile, Tanya and Yadi advise the same thing to Mish. They remind her that going out with the school's hottie doesn't make her famous like she wants to be. She should also stop giving Danny any chance now since he has already broken her heart many times. Later at home, Mish goes through her grandma's closet to pick a dress for the upcoming party. Her frisky mood soon changes when she learns that her younger sister Jessie, who lives with their biological father, has come to stay with them. Though Mish doesn't like her privacy to be invaded, she accepts her sister's presence in her room. Jessie was dropped by their father, so Mish catches up with him and talks about her rather exciting school life. On the day of the party, Mish and her friends are clad in traditional Mexican wee peel dresses. Her stepfather drops them to the venue, only to discover that Mish has misunderstood the party as a traditional pageant. Consequently, they become an amusement for the rest of the partygoers, especially Brenda and her mean friends. Regardless, Mish wins everyone's hearts with her talent for singing. She takes over the floor with her incredible voice, impressing everyone. After her performance, Maddie asks her to be his business partner for event planning, where she could work as a performer. Mish gladly accepts his offer, believing that he has started liking her. But much to her dismay, she discovers that Maddie only wants to get close to her to get Brenda's phone number. But they do have their partnership contract intact. As the days pass, Maddie and Brenda soon start dating and fall in love, much to Mish's disappointment. The following day at school, there is a new transfer student named Maho. It turns out that Maho, a citizen of Chiapas, moved here because she's a homosexual, and when a picture of her kissing a girl went viral, it caused her life to be upturned. Consequently, she fled her hometown. When Mish sees Maho sitting by the fountain with the popular kids on her first day at school, she cannot help but be curious about this new girl. She is now determined to investigate her background. Meanwhile, Danny skips class that day in order to leave a letter for Mish in her room. He sneaks into the backyard, but is sadly caught by the stepfather, Fur. Danny then talks about his secret relationship with Mish and how he wronged her. In response, Fur advises him not to leave the ones he loves in the dark. He gives an example of a flower, telling him that if you hide them, they will die. Back in school, the students are grouped into three for a computer project. Much to their disappointment, Brenda and Mish are teamed up together along with Maho. Reluctantly, they go to Mish's house to do the group project together. Danny is already there, and Tanya soon joins him because they're partners. After a while, Maddie also comes over to talk about business with Mish. Now that everyone is gathered under the same roof, Grandma shows them Mish's photo when she was in diapers. She tells tales of little Mish being very snotty when she was small. Because of this, our girl is understandably embarrassed in front of her friends. After a brief lunch together, Fur gives his daughter the letter given by Danny. However, she is in no mood to forgive him, so she shoves the letter under her bed. Adding to her already grumpy mood, Maddie suggests they should partner with Brenda to handle their socials. This makes Mish really angry, so she confronts her cousin for wanting to ruin their business. Brenda is by no means backing down. Instead, she feels proud to have Maddie under her fingertips. In a fit of rage, Mish says something very personal about Brenda's parents, causing her grandma to bicker with her. Maho then takes Mish outside to clear the air. They hang out in a park and eat some ice cream together. While they're chatting, a group of boys recognize Maho from her viral picture and make fun of her, callously calling her the meme girl. Mish seems oblivious, so she asks Maho what the boys are talking about. However, the latter doesn't say anything and simply runs away. Mish's life continues to be a roller coaster ride when she learns that the school is going to stage a musical performance based on Alice in Wonderland. 
She desires to be the protagonist because this is the only moment in high school where she can show that she is here, leave a mark, and be heard. However, Yadi and Tanya know better because only the skinny girls with perfect white legs are chosen as the protagonists. Despite this, Mish is determined to audition for the role. Even though Yadi and Tanya are not particularly supportive of her, Maho ignites hope in Mish, making her believe that she may be the one to change the course of history. This is particularly because no plus-size Mexican has ever played the lead role in their school. That evening, Mish tries on dresses and practices for the audition with Maho. They get caught up in their drama so much that Mish forgets about attending Tanya's graffiti competition. In the meantime, Tanya wins the best graffiti design competition, based on a sisterhood theme. She had drawn a picture of her, Yadi, and Mish to showcase a pure and meaningful sisterhood bond between them. However, despite the win, she is upset that her best friend didn't show up to support her. The following day, Mish profusely apologizes to Tanya and promises to make it up to her. Just then, she remembers that it's her grandma's 70th birthday, but she doesn't have any gift ready. Anxious, Mish thoughtlessly announces that she will sign up for the most beautiful flower competition. Grandma is beyond elated because she wanted Mish to participate in the competition for so long now and keep up the legacy. It's revealed that Mish is from a slightly prejudiced family that values tradition and culture above everything else. Turns out her mother, grandma, and great-grandma all became the most beautiful flowers in their eras. In the next scene, Mish rushes to the school's auditorium and gives her best performance. To her good luck, the judges seem to be impressed with her voice and dance skills. Maho, Yadi, and Tanya congratulate her backstage. Suddenly, Mish gets a call from her mom and learns that the family is in the city square to sign up for the most beautiful flower competition. Mish didn't think her family would take the competition so seriously. Hence, she rushes to the city square to stop them from signing up. When she arrives there, she learns that her grandma has already registered her name. Now, Mish is worried because there's a lot of pressure on her to become the most beautiful flower. If she doesn't succeed, her family's legacy will be in jeopardy.